Hello, Jason. Welcome to the show, Options Brew TV, with Jason De Lorenzo of Adeum Funds. Did I get it right? Adeum. Yeah, that's good. How are you? Part two. We're back. Um, first one, variance risk premium, which is really good. We will have that posted uh, shortly. Um, this one is going to be gamma hedging. Is that right? That's right. Okay. So. Can you, t can you start us off with what is Gamma? Does that help the, the, some of the, the more sure. um, newer users? Yeah? Sure. Um, okay, go ahead. So Gamma is one of the popular Greeks that a lot of people mention. It is the first derivative of Delta. So it is how much Delta moves with respect to the underlying. Mm -hmm. Delta, of course, is a myriad of things, but for our purposes now, it is how much your p l moves with every move in the underlying, with every point in the underlying. So gamma is how much the delta moves in relation to that. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll share my slide. Basically, this is part two in what I would like to describe as the dealer's position, which okay. is former Lex, the little the black jacket over there, Lex, yep. who is the dealer. He's taking the opposite side of all of our trades. These dealers are the, are the have the most have the greatest position in all of options in the marketplace. So to know how they stand and to know what they do is very important. And this one is also very important with relation to that. So I'm going to share my my slide. Okay, great. So this is my slide about gamma hedging. Yep. So as we talked about, gamma is the first derivative of delta. That is for you calculus people. Um, but it also shows how the convexity of options that it's telling you how much quicker your position is changing in options. Now, if you are long gamma, it's changing fast positively. If you are short gamma, it's changing fast negatively. Okay, we'll explain that in an example here. So okay. I want to make sure they understand. You want me to do it now or you want to you want to go ahead? So what, what, what Jason means by that is if you're, if you're long gamma, okay, when the stock goes up, you get longer. When the stock goes down, you get shorter. That's a good thing. Okay? Right. That's a good thing. Conversely, when you're short gamma, when the stock goes up, you get shorter deltas and hence probably losing money, not necessarily, but probably. And when the stock goes down with a short gamma position, you are getting longer deltas, probably losing money, not necessarily be, depending on, you know, theta and all that other stuff and, and what volatility is doing. Right. So that's the, the concept price, of how that works with gamma. Go ahead. Sorry. Right. And the price of that is what we talked about in the last one, the variance risk premium. It's the premium that you're paying. It is what is, that is the cost of the convexity of your position, the gamma of your position. Correct. Good. Nobody wants to give that away for free. Exactly right. Okay. Great. Right, so we'll go back to my slide. Um, I'll talk, I'll explain real quick what these two charts are here on the right side. Over here is the gamma exposure of dealers. Now, most of the time, as we spoke about last time, dealers are short gamma mm -hmm. on the downside um, and long gamma on the upside. And dealers do not like that exposure. So they are constantly hedging their risk as the market goes down against them. They are hedging by buying the underlying or futures or any, any uh, SPY, um, any kind of vol product. I mean, they, they have their own um, hedging formulas, but essentially though, it is shorting the market more since they are short gamma down, mm -hmm. right? Does that make sense, Lex? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Okay. Um, the proof of that is right over here. So a way that people measure dealer gamma position is you take the open interest of every single option. So mm -hmm. this requires a little bit of Python or some kind of program. You take the open interest of every single option. Each of them have their own gamma mm -hmm. according to their own pricing model, usually like Black-Scholes or something sure. like that. Um, I use Black-Scholes because in general, it's right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not always right, but you know, mm -hmm. and sure. so what we do is you take the gamma, multiply it times the open interest position, and then you have to decide whether, uh, dealers are 
short the puts. And most people, what they do is they assume that dealers are short puts and long calls. Mm -hmm. So when the, that's the normal assumption. Um, mm -hmm. So what you do is you multiply all the puts times the gamma, which is going to be negative. Mm -hmm. And then you multiply all the calls times their gamma individually mm -hmm. as positive. And you come up with a dollar value. So over here, this top, this top chart over mm -hmm. here, it's, an, I should say, it is not that simple. This is kind of stuff that yep, right. you have to have advanced, uh, advanced data sources and uh, calculations in order to do it. So right. it's not simple. It's better to actually get a service. Again, I use squeeze metrics for this. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's spot gamma out there. I've, I've tried them a little bit, but uh, I find that squeeze metrics is much more comprehensive and a lot more careful with their calculations. But anyway, so you can see after you do that calculation, when gamma exposure of the dealers mm -hmm. is positive, the more positive it is, the less volatility you have. Why, did, why is that, Lex? Let me ask a question so I understand the graph. <laughs> um, where am I seeing, so is this is the positive side, right? And this is the positive part of gamma exposure? No, no. Okay, so that top half that you have there, Yep is movement in SPX. The y-axis is movement in SPX. Okay, got it. X-axis is the dollar value of gamma exposure for the dealers. Thanks for asking. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. So this out here on the x-axis is what again? I'm sorry. So that that's 1.5 million of gamma exposure in dollar terms. Okay. Of the That's the dealer's position. Okay. Okay. okay, got it. So that is, and we're assuming that's long gamma out there. Uh, yes, they're long gamma when the gamma exposure is positive. Okay, mm -hmm. I understand. Okay, I understand. I got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay, now yeah. I got it. So here's here, now. Now I understand. So let me. So the, the bigger the gamma, look how tight those moves get. So now we start hovering right. around zero point zero zero. It isn't really zero point zero zero. It's it's some number between plus 5% and minus 5% as gamma, positive gamma exposure gets greater. Why? I know the answer, but go ahead. Oh, you want me to tell you the answer? Yeah, you can tell me. I, I'm going to, I'll, I'll fine tune it a little bit if I need to. <laughs> okay. So as you go down in, or as, as your gamma exposure decreases, there are more and more dealers that have to hedge a lot more because they are short puts. So mm -hmm. they have to, and because that gamma is con convex. It is a, as Lex explained before, if you are short gamma, then you have, to, then you're going to be losing money at an exponential rate, not mm -hmm. at a, um, not a binary, you know, like a stock. If you lose a dollar in your stock position, then you right. lost a dollar. But if, the, if you lose a dollar in your delta, in your gamma, then it will exponentially go, you'll lose money exponentially faster. So they mm -hmm. have to hurry up and sell their sell their uh, underlying and keep doing it doing it and then when it goes up when you get a bounce then they have to buy really fast because they have to hedge they have to release the hedges of their option position mm -hmm. and i do lex that's very good that's very good <laughs> so that's that's excellent so think about it this way too and it's, it's almost the same thing but when we when we and this is part of the reason we there's pin risk at certain gamma zones right in the old right. days and what happens is is that in high gamma, in a high gamma situations, we would get long deltas. Remember, as the stock went up, we get long deltas. What do we have to do to hedge that? We sell stock. What does that make the stock do? Go down. When the stock went down, we had to buy deltas. What does that make the stock do? Go up. So the longer gamma zones, you have everyone vying for that. And everyone's, it's like a ping pong ball in a small little box. And you keep hovering around a small zone because we're doing the opposite thing. Price go up, we're selling it. Price go down, we're buying it conversely in the short gamma zones we're doing the opposite and we're pushing prices beyond in the you know when we have to buy when it's going up and sell when it's going down and it gets it gets exacerbated you know and, and exaggerated and it, you could see that a lot at option expiration back in the day and we knew our inventory in the pit because we knew we all talked to each other so we we're all like oh we're long so many of these we would pin that thing all the time was, we had a lot of the inventory right back right. in back in those days so that's a great graph. I think it's an excellent graph. Well, it's also kind of remarkable. I mean, I couldn't, you can't do a, um, a trend line on this like we did with the VIX SPX thing mm -hmm. before because um, 
that's uh, heteroscedastic. So it, it widens. So you can't really do. Uh, yep. You can't really do it. But it's remarkable how much that gamut exposure affects the returns of SPX. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like how much those, how much you dealers had control of the market in that time. Yeah. So why can't you, why can't, I mean, I'm sure Squeeze Metrics does this, but why can't you sort of create, I don't know, an indicator of sorts of gamma squeeze or whatever you want to call this, you know? Well, that's what that bottom thing is right there. Mm -hmm. Did I jump so, ahead without knowing I'm jumping ahead? Sorry. Yeah, you are. Um, yeah. So this was, this was obviously not today, but mm -hmm. um this was a while, this chart was a while back. Yeah. And this line at any given point in, on the, uh, the bottom, the X axis there is SPX and the mm -hmm. Y axis is their gamma exposure by billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So if you have, if you're high on this curve and above zero, you can see zero kind of crosses at 4,000 yep. SPX. If you're high in this curve, that means that you're way up here in the top of sure. this gamma exposure area. Mm -hmm. Once you start hitting that zero spot right down there at 4,000, mm -hmm. and you're getting that wider and wider and wider birth, that kind of the horn of the trumpet right there. Yep. So this is a really good indicator of where you are on the gamma, on the gamma curve. Mm -hmm. um, squeeze metrics has two different measures of it. This one in the bottom here is every individual stock in the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. And then they also have the index options um, separately. So, okay, so is GEX their, their own term? Yes. Okay, yes. so that's the S&P 500, every gamma component, and they've normalized it into SPX terms? Yep. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's a really good, really good indicator. So ironically, right now, it is June, what day is it today? June 22nd, golly, June 22nd end of June. At, at, one o'clock um since we're not live i have to specify what time it is yeah um june 22nd at around 1 15 mm -hmm. we are borderline on the zero gamma exposure area we are in that that very rapid movement area and uh two trading days ago we saw a minus 70 uh and yesterday we saw a plus 50 to mm -hmm. get to flip back into the positive gamma regime um I mean, you saw the very wide movements. Um, ironically, also, you didn't see a lot of VIX movement associated with it, or VIX underperformed it, what it was right. supposed to be, quite a bit. So Interesting. we'll talk about so, that later. Yeah, so you're saying then current readings, right, is what, you, what you're referring to, right? Yes. Um, current readings were somewhere, and I, the numbers aren't exactly the same, but we're somewhere right around that zero mark, whatever this yes. number might be, right? Yes. It, it's some other number than that. 42.25. Got it. Okay, I missed that part. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and... God, I wonder if the theory holds true that when you get to that zero number, you can expect a little bit of volatility in SPX, let's call it, which also can mean the market. Um, and if you should take a, you know, a bona fide long position in gamma uh, as, a, as, as a retail guy or gal. I'll, I'll tell you what I do. And this is, um, you know, because obviously you don't want to wait until you're down here in order to... Uh, begin to hedge or get long gamma. Mm -hmm. um, what I do is I hedge heat. Like, if, let's take this bottom chart right now. We're at 4,100 and 4,000 is where gamma exposure is zero. Mm -hmm. I'll take a position, maybe a, um, a delta neutral, kind of a butterfly at the money yep. or you know something like that, a condor, and I will hedge it down there at that 4,000, I'll do a, a vertical, a bearish vertical, or mm -hmm. maybe even like a small calendar or something like that, that is positive Vega, because you know the volatility will increase, you see it there on the top chart, mm -hmm. and negative Delta, because it, you're going to have to go down in order to get down there, um, go down in equities in order to get to that gamma exposure of zero. Mm -hmm. um, so what I do is I hedge, and that's, that was the last bullet. So we jumped across like three bullets and went to the last one. Yep. What I do is I do a vertical or a calendar, even a long call, a long put if it's cheap enough. Mm -hmm. um, I'll hedge in that area. Is that right? So yeah. you, you're hedging, you know, whatever this graph is called, uh, at zero-ish is where you start 
initiate. That's where I guide my hedging. Yeah. On, that's great. And then, so when you're getting higher, and it's like around 0 0.4, 0 0.6, I tend to do, um, I tend to do, you know, theta, gamma, um, or negative gamma, you know, theta positive kind of moves at the money butterflies, yeah. maybe a little wide. Um, yep. You know, as long as everything is kind of standard. Sure. And I would so this is my premium selling zone. That's where I, that's where Lex is selling premium. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming I can find high premium. And this is where I'm considering hedging and or, um, you know, maybe getting long a little little gamma if it's if it just if the volatility justifies it. Right. Well, I I get long gamma basically down there for, uh, in this scenario in that in that chart mm -hmm. I would get long gamma at four thousand. It's probably going to be pretty cheap. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and it'll probably so I'll get long gamma either via calendar or vertical or even a, a long put if it's cheap enough. Right. Very mm -hmm. cool. Very cool. And so Good. any move that you do with options and, you know, especially in index options, you consider that. Mm -hmm. um, just to remember, this is the dealer's position in gamma and this is the, uh, and the lower gamma exposure is on the dealer side, the more volatile mm -hmm. the market is, or even the stock, the yeah. stock itself. That's nice. And there's always a lot more stock things to, to account for, stuff like earnings and dividends and sure you know so it's not quite as pure in a stock by stock basis but it is very indicative if you check it out mm -hmm. so love it okay that's great that's a good one jason i appreciate yeah. that super episode hi i'm lex if you're new to options brew tv be sure to subscribe and help us grow our channel i'm always adding new videos with great information on options and options trading thank you